Hey there everybody, it's Chili here. Welcome to tutorial 6 of Beginner's C++ Game Programming. Today we're going to be making our first functions. Hey, I got a question for you. How do functions break up? They just uh, stop calling each other? But um bum -tsh. So here's the code from the homework for the previous tutorial. And so we just got the variables x and y for the two boxes and a boolean for colliding. Over here in the CPP file, we've got some code for drawing the boxes, code for detecting if the boxes are colliding, and code for moving the boxes. All straightforward, I hope. Now, one thing here that's kind of janky is we've got these we've got these put pixel calls here for drawing the two boxes, but they're basically the same code, right? Just some different values being used. And uh, it's kind of wasteful. It's kind of wasteful to do the copy the same code over and over again. Imagine if we didn't have two boxes, if we had like eight boxes. That would be a shit ton of put pixel calls just chilling out in our compose frame function here. Not very good. That is suboptimal. So what we want to do is we want to take the this code here, jam it into a function, a new function that we create, and then call that function whenever we want to draw a box. So let's do that. First things first, we're going to switch over to the H file. Here's where we declare the game class and we declare everything that goes inside of a game object, including, you know, the variables and the functions. So we want to declare a new function that is going to be part of the game class. So here we're going to do the simplest one we can. Return type is going to be void, no return. And we're just going to do a draw box and no parameters. And there you go. So the declaration contains what it returns, what parameters it takes, and the name of the function. Now we're not done, of course, because this is just a declaration. We need now to define that motherfucker. My definition. My definition is this. My definition. Void. And this is the important part. You've got to type in here, you've got to type game double colon and that says we want to we want to define a function inside of the game class and we'll just go to draw box here finish that up some curly braces to put our code inside and there you go and you might say well chili why do we need this game thing here we didn't need it over here and the difference is of course inside of the game class Inside of these curly braces, it's implied that everything you're doing is going to be part of game. So you don't have to put that, uh, it's called a scope resolution operator. You don't have to put that inside of the game class uh, declaration. But when you're outside of these curly braces, you've got to make it clear that you're talking about something inside of the game class. So you put these motherfuckers. By the way, you can put this function definition or the function function declaration anywhere you want in here i'm just putting it here because uh you know i i made it special for you this little section here but you can put it anywhere you want so what's going to go inside of the draw box function well we're going to take this code and we're just going to cut it and jam her in there just jam it in uh just mash it in there you go now we want to call this function where we basically transplanted the code from. So we're going to go draw box and there you go, Bob's your uncle. That should work unless I, you know, fucked something up. And success. Good times. Okay. So that works. So this is great now. We've replaced all that code inside of compose frame with draw box. We just moved it over here basically, but Remember, one of the great things about functions is that you can call them over and over again in different places, uh, but we can't really do that with Drawbox, can we? Because Drawbox right now, it is coupled to the X fixed and Y fixed uh, variables, the, the member variables here. So it's always going to draw a box at this position. If we want to draw a box at a different position, well, we're fucked, aren't we? If we want to draw the X mobile box, no, son, you can't do that. Too bad. Go home. So the way that we can decouple our function from this uh, member variable is we can add some parameters in here. So I'm just going to do that right now. Int X, int Y, int R, int G, int B. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make our function take five parameters. And we'll just copy this and paste that in here. And now we want these put pixel calls to work based on these parameters and not based on the, uh, the member variables. So we can just get rid of all of these uh, underscore fixed with some find and replace. And then we delete this stuff here because it's no longer needed, of course. And we got to change, get rid of this here. We got to change our function now because it needs some function parameters. So we're going to go in for x, I got an underscore there, fixed, y, fixed. And then RGB is just going to be 255, 255, 255. And if we do that, shouldn't be any problems. Hmm. I think it might have been green, actually. But otherwise, super good. So RGB. There we go. Now, we want to do the same thing for the mobile reticle. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this stuff here. And actually, we can just get rid of these variables now totally. And all we're going to do here is call uh, draw box with different color parameters depending on if it's colliding or not. So here, let's just copy this. Copy that, paste it here, paste it here. No, don't paste it there. Uh, so we're going to take this fixed. I'm going to go mobile. So if it's colliding, we're going to make this call here with the red color. And if it is not colliding, we're going to default to white. And this should work fine. Awesome. Great times. Now you may ask, well, Chili, when do I know, when should I use parameters, and when should I just uh, access the member variables directly? And well, in this case, with the draw box, I mean, if you're going to be drawing multiple boxes at different places, you want to be able to uh, have parameters to set that, to specify where you want to draw the box. But if, if your function here to draw a box only had to draw one box, then you could just couple it directly to those member variables. Uh, but in our case, we want to draw multiple boxes. Now, one thing that I would just like to note here, not a big deal, but uh, the member variables here, it doesn't actually matter what you call them, which might seem strange, but you can call them whatever you want. So you can call this uh, dicks out for Harambe, which is not going to make sense in like two years. And it builds fine. It doesn't actually care what the names of these guys are. You could even omit the names altogether, and it still builds fine. But I don't recommend that you do that. Just give them the names, the same names that you put in the function definition, and it'll make your code a lot easier to read in many cases. Now, one thing I'd like to mention is in the solution video, the solution that I gave you, uh, the reticles, even if they're overlapping by one pixel, so just at the borders, it's not going to detect that as a collision. And that's that's okay depending on how you want to define a collision. If the pixels of the boxes are just overlapping. You could define that as a touch rather than a uh, overlap. But in my head, to be honest with you guys, in my head I also wanted this to be a collision and I just uh, I just messed up a little bit. So, how do we fix that? Well, the best way, in my opinion, of fixing that is here. We set these less than to be less than or equals and greater than or equals. And this will include the case where they're just overlapping, whereas less than would not include that case. Now, if we look at this code here, we might say, well, Chili, what about this stuff? Could we put this in a function? And I say, yay. I say, yay, 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 yay. So if we want to check if two boxes are overlapping, we'll create a function that takes the position of the two boxes and returns a boolean indicating whether they're overlapping or not. So we'll call this bool uh, overlap test. So I've named my two box parameters box zero and box one. And we take the X and the Y of those boxes and we return a bool indicating whether or not they overlap. Now let me show you a little trick here. You can select a uh, function 
def declaration. And if you go quick actions, create declaration definition. And it will create this definition for you in game.cpp. And then you can click here to promote the document. And here we are. It's created the whole thing for us, even put in here the return value. So yeah, at, if a function has a return value, you have to, at the end, you have to end it by saying return and the value that you want to return from the function, which is different than a void function. You don't have to put shit in there. Now we're going to take the, uh, the collision code. Where is it? It's right here. And we're going to copy that. Cut it out, actually, and paste it here. All right, so what we're going to do is for the local colliding, we're going to go bool test is colliding. We'll set it to false. All right, so this is the colliding variable that I'm going to use inside the function. Don't get it confused with the one outside, because that's the one that's actually controlling uh, this color here. This one is just the, uh, the result of this particular overlap. All right, so test is colliding true, false, return, test is colliding. Now, we don't want this uh, operation to be coupled to our member variables. We want it to use the parameters. So we are going to replace mobile with box zero and do the same for fixed. Replace it with box one. Now all we got to do is make these X and Y parameters match the, uh, the parameters up here. Uh, you can do that by changing these ones if you like to match these or by changing these ones to match these. Either is fine. And once you've done all this, all that's left is to actually call the function in the, uh, the game logic. So we're going to go colliding is equal to overlap test and then we pass in the coordinates of our boxes. It doesn't matter whether fixed comes first or mobile comes first. But don't get the X and Ys, don't get their order mixed up, otherwise you're not going to get the proper results. And if we build this and run it, it should give us the same... Yep, no problem now. All good. Now we can make this function a little more streamlined. Uh, get rid of this variable. And uh, we get rid of this return. And here, we can just since we're setting the, the, uh, the boolean to some value and then returning that value, why don't we just return that value directly? So return true if the collide test passes and return false if it fails. And this is a little better. Still no problem, no red underlines. But wait, this isn't even my final form. That was a terrible freeze. I don't know, I don't even remember what freeze sounds like. Anyways. We can do better than this, because think about it. What we're doing here is in this if statement, we're saying if this is true, return true, and if this is false, return false. So why don't we just cut out the middleman and return the result of this logical operation directly? Because it's exactly the same thing. We can just return this result directly. And there you go, return this thing. And then we don't even need the if statement. Pretty fucking sweet. And just to, uh, to prove to you that I am not a bullshitter, there you go. Same functionality, but a lot sexier. So now we've, uh, we've made our compose frame and our update model functions a lot sexier. It's a lot easier to read. Instead of having a bunch of code and you have to try to figure out what it says, you have these function calls and the names of the function calls tell you what's happening. Here we're doing a test to see whether two boxes are overlapping. And here we're drawing the boxes. Instead of a bunch of put pixels, we're like, what the fuck is this even? Now, the last thing I wanted to do here was I wanted to make more boxes. Because uh, it'll just illustrate how much easier this is. So let's make, you know, let's make three more boxes. And we're going to have to give them now different names. So we'll say zero... Fuck. Zero, one, two, three. Because real programmers count from zero. And so do I sometimes. Unless I forget. Doesn't matter. Uh, so we'll just set them at some different uh, places here. This one at 15. This one's gonna be at 
30. I guess that's fine. I don't know. That's fine. And now we've got to draw those guys and test. So, oh, I get rid of that space. That, that line has been bugging me. All right, so, draw a box. What we're going to do here is we're going to draw four boxes now. Yeah? Okay, all good. And for the collision, what we're going to do is we're going to be colliding... Here, we'll just fucking... So we're going to do an OR statement here. And we're going to be colliding if at least one of these collide tests is true. So, now we just got to put the numbers in. So there's all the numbers put in there, and we just do a logical OR to combine these four tests into a single, uh, into a single Boolean result. So if at least one of these tests is true, then we are colliding with at least one box. And then we change the color of our uh, mobile box. So, build that. And there's our... My, I could have spaced them out a little better, uh, to be honest. I didn't... This isn't the best... Uh, the best orientation here. But you get the idea. And you see that, yeah, it's true. It will keep it red as long as you are on at least one of the boxes. And just imagine what this compose frame and this uh, update model would look like if we didn't have these function calls. It would be a lot uglier, ug -ugular, uh with all this code just chilling out in the middle of our higher level function here. And that, my friends, is how we make functions. Less work for the same amount of awesome and sexier code. Sweet deal. And now it's time for the homework. So I've, uh, I've taken the liberty of spacing those boxes out a little more. Looks a little better now, but that's not the homework. Uh, the homework is, well, the code that we've been using so far, at least the code that I have been using, doesn't have the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the, the test to keep you within the boundaries of the screen. So I have just implemented that test, and that is going to be the homework to do that test again. Only this time, you're going to do it with functions. So I'll give you two levels of difficulty here. Level one is simply use functions to keep uh, the mobile box within the window. Now, difficulty level two is you're going to do that except you're not allowed to access the member variables directly within the function. You're going to have to use parameters. And that's actually the best way to do it, because then you can reuse that function for multiple different boxes if you need to. I mean, obviously, we don't need to here, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, and I'm going to give you a big hint. If you're doing it the hard way, where you're not using the member variables directly, uh, then you're gonna you're gonna need more than one function. I mean, there's there's ways of doing it in a single function, but I haven't taught you those things yet. So if you're using only what I've taught you, and you're doing it the hard way, then you're gonna need to use probably two functions. That's a hint. But yeah, just a little bit of homework to get you familiar with creating your own functions. And that'll about do it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with some more C++.